what did drive you to become an actor? Uh, you know what? Um, I became an actor by accident, believe it or not. Um, I was in New York when I was very young, grew up there. My mother was a school teacher. And my mother recognized that I had a gift for the dramatic art. She saw me always pretending to be this one and acting out scenes from this movie or that movie. And she got it in her head that I would probably make a very good actor. So she tried to find some acting jobs for me, and wanted me to audition for this thing or that thing. And I was like, ah, I don't want to do that. And then finally, after about two years, she said, you know, that acting job, if you had auditioned, if you had got the job, you would have made $300 a week. And I said, why didn't you tell me that at first? So the next time an audition came, I said yes, I auditioned, I got the job, and I fell in love with it. And that's kind of how I became an actor. And which directors you work with is the most uh, influencing for you in terms of, of you know, generosity, but also inspiration? The most important director I worked with was Francis Coppola because, you know, I worked with him when I was really very, very young. I was 14 on Apocalypse Now, and uh, I did another movie with him after that called Rumblefish, and then I did another movie with him after that called The Cotton Club, and I think the last one we did together was a film called Gardens of Stone. So over, let's say, a 10-year period, I worked with him on four different movies, and I learned so much from working with him and working with all the other actors that were involved in those movies and all the other artists that worked on those movies. It was really sort of my education. There was nothing that, nothing that was so specific that I could tell you. What I can tell you is that there were people like Dennis Hopper, the late Dennis Hopper, Martin Sheen, people like Mickey Rourke, people like Matt Dillon, people like Nicolas Cage, people like Gregory Hines, people like Richard Gere, um, people like Diane Lane, who I worked with on two of those movies that Francis directed. Um, it was just those years of working with him and his company that was really an education for me. And as an actor, which is the difference working on uh, with, with film industry and on TV series, as you was part of CSI mm -hmm. and uh, you was also in the Hannibal project yes. at NBC. So yes. Which is the well, the thing about CSI that was interesting was CSI, even though it was television, it was like... Um, they still shot on film. Nowadays, most things are shot on digital cameras, so there's no film running through the camera. With CSI, they were still shooting on film. So it was like making a small movie every week. And then with Hannibal, uh, because it was uh, financed by Gaumont, which is this French company, they financed it. So we had the freedom to do things and experiment with things that we would not have had the freedom to do if an American company had financed it. And just about uh, political involvement of, you know, uh, arts and specific uh, movie fields, academy and whatever else, w what is your opinion? Well, um, I'm not very um, outspoken politically about things. I think that my choices as an artist are the best way for me to use my voice in terms of political, in terms of politics. It's the stuff that I choose to do and the stuff that I choose not to do that expresses my politics. At this point in, in your career, you would choose the red or the blue pill? It's always a red pill day. Every day is a red pill day. Thank you. You're very welcome.